became an attorney not long after I graduated from law school and uh, took the bar probably within six months of graduating. It's a rather small office. So we have a, a small reception area in the front where my secretary is. I have a small office. Uh, there's um, another bullpen area where the word processor sits and um, my supervisor has his own little office as well. Word processors are an odd lot. I had one prior to Bartleby who came in one day and announced he got a job. They will come to you one day and say, I need to leave. I've brought someone for you to interview. And he introduced me to this other person, Bartleby. I asked him if he knew him very well. He said, no, I've worked on other temp jobs with him. And uh, so uh, he, he seems to be a very good word processor. I look at this guy and he looked like he might have come from a Washington Irving novel in, in slacker's clothes. He was an odd lad. James Webb's office, how may I direct your call? And given the fact that I didn't want to make life horrible for my previous word processor, I hired him. He was different, definitely different. Little strange, but kind. Mr. Turk, you have a call on line two. I guess he was very good uh, by some people's standards. Um, not necessarily mine, but he, he, he was competent. We are a little office. My secretary's kid runs around the office after school. Uh, well, Mr. Webb, he was very, very flexible. My son goes to school about a couple blocks away and he's allowed to come after school and that's, that's a big deal. In this office we do a lot of things having to do with wills and real estate and things that are not necessarily litigation oriented. One person reads to the other, the other person puts the proofreading marks on it. It has to be letter perfect. And so Walter ran across one of those documents, came to me and said, can I ask Bartleby to work with me? I said, yes, please go ahead. So I very simply asked Mr. Bartleby if he'd be kind enough to go through the procedure and, and proofread with me. And his response was, was rather simple. I prefer not to. A supervisor is asking an employee to do a normal work function. And the response is, I prefer not to. Walter, of course, said, excuse me, what did I just hear? Bartleby said again, I prefer not to. I could understand if, if, if you were asking something to, asking someone to do something out of their job parameter. That I can understand. So, of course, in my doorway is Walter saying, did you just hear that? <clears throat> I said, of course, I just heard that. It's a simple question. Assist me in proofreading your work. I prefer not to. I said, uh, Bartleby, it's very important as part of this job, I told you from the outset, that you have to proof. And he looked at me and he said, I prefer not to. No, that can't be tolerated in any business atmosphere. I didn't really know what to do after that. I was somewhat flummoxed. I don't tend to like to yell at people. It must have looked kind of silly. I retreated to my office with, with Walter in tow. <laughs> and, um, Walter was like, well, what are you going to do about this? And I said, well, I need some time to think about it, okay? Well, he, he wouldn't work. He would just stare out the window. He wouldn't work. Well, I am the supervisor. And if one of my employees is, is not doing their job, well... I thought, well, maybe he'll come around. We'll try again later. Should have fired him immediately. Well, I mean, in those circumstances, you're, you're oftentimes thinking of yourself first. I would have to get another word processor. Okay, you start planting seeds of insubordination all over the place.
I imagine that a more forceful person, somebody a little bit more aggressive than myself, might have actually, I think, helped him. Why would I feel responsible? Look, all I did was do my job. I don't know, maybe I could have reached out to him. You know, out of uh, respect for Mr. Webb, my employer, I'll sit here. But that question was totally out of line. And insulting. When I heard him say, I prefer not to, it was quite possibly, I don't know, what would you call it, a resonance? Something's changed. Something's different. Bartleby's gone. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing everything that I have to do. But there isn't that forward push that I used to have. I didn't really notice it myself un until I noticed the absence of it. I didn't notice that I was a very solitary person. I notice that now. I couldn't tell you if that troubles me or not. My vision of what I think will happen for me in the future. I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it at all.